Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be solving another Physics 7C practice problem called Spherical Mirrors and Images. Remember, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Your support helps a lot and we really appreciate the feedback. Okay, here's the problem. Remember to pause the video so you can copy so that it's easier for you to follow along. Here we go. Two kids, Thomas and Stella, which I'll label T and S, stand in front of a big lens at positions as shown in the picture. The two images that the lens forms of the kids are at equal distances from the lens. Our questions for this are, A, what type of lens, converging or diverging, is this, and what type of image, real or virtual, is formed for each kid? Determine the focal length of the lens, and if T and S are the same height, are their images the same also? If not, which image is larger? And then we have a part two of this problem that we'll come back to after we finish part one. Part A says, the two images that the lens forms of the kids are at equal distances from each other. So if the images are equal distances from each other, we wanna know, first of all, is this lens converging or diverging? Since the images uh, are of equal distance to the lens, so if this is here and this is here and our um, images are equal distances from the lens and one's close and one's further away, we know that one of the images is going to show up on this side and one of the images is going to show up on this side. The only way we can get an image um, to be on both sides is for a converging lens. So when we look at this, if one of, the, one of these two figures is going to be on this side and one of these two figures is going to be on this side, that's the only way two objects that are uh, apart from each other can be the same distance from the lens because they're not the same distance to start. So we know that this is a converging lens then. Converging. Because one of our objects is going to be, or one of our images is going to be over here, and one of our images is going to be over here. We also know that the closer image is going to be the one inside the focal point. So it's going to be the one that shows up on the same side. And the one on the outside is going to be... Um, the one on the inside is going to be the one that appears over here, and the one on the outside is gonna be the one that appears over here. Um, let's remember that for um, real versus virtual images, that if i is greater than zero, it's real, and if, um, yeah, f is greater than zero, it's converging. So those are two important facts. So if the image is greater than uh, the object, or greater than um, zero, so if it's positive, um, it's real. So in this case, one of these images is going to be on the opposite side. Since Stella's closer, her image, when we draw rays for her, when we draw rays for her, we can't get this light back to a point um, on this side of the graph where the image where the light intersects. So her image is going to be virtual. So Stella is virtual. But for T, for Thomas, for T, his light will intersect. Um, but it'll be upside down. So it'll be down here somewhere. So Thomas is real. Sorry, this picture is messy. There's a lot of light rays we have to draw on it. Determine the focal length of the lens. So this is just remembering the equation, the focal length equation, one over F equals one over the object plus one over the image. 
okay? So we need to keep that in mind. And from here, if we want to find the focal length, um, Thomas, we can use Thomas. His distance from the lens is four. So one over four meters. Um, plus one over the image equals one over the focal length. And then for Stella, one over the focal length equals one over the image plus one half meters. But remember that for Stella, her image is uh, less than zero. It's a virtual image. So this is negative. So for the focal equation, remember that it's a negative for virtual images and positive for real images. Okay. So if we set these two equations equal for each other, so we, we don't want to, we don't need the image distance, we want the focal length to, uh, distance. So I can say on this equation here that 1 over i equals 1 over f minus 1 over 4. Okay, so I can plug that into here. And what I get is 2 over f, the focal length, equals 3 fourths. Um, so the focal length equals 8 thirds meters. Okay? So part C says if Thomas and Stella are the same height, are their images the same height also? If not, which one is larger? So this is using the magnification equation. Height of the image over height of the object equals negative I over O. So the magnification of Thomas, so if their height of their objects are the same, then magnification of Thomas equals height of the initial over height of Thomas. Equals negative I over O. So if we want just the absolute value, the image for Stella is closer distance, or her object distance is closer. Um, so if we look at these equations, we can also write it as I'm going to write it over here. The magnification equals height of the image times the object distance or the image times the object height. And I'm going to say the absolute value because we just care about which one's bigger, not which one is upside down or right side up. So this is another way to write it. So Thomas has an, um, they both have the same initial height right? But the object distance, I'm sorry, they both have the same object height, um, but since the object distance for Stella is closer, her height of her image is going to be bigger. So if for these to be the same, Stella's height has to go up since her object distance goes down. So that means the height of the image is Stella, I'll just put S, is greater than T for magnification. I'm sorry, for height. Okay, that is part one. Let's take a look at question two. Shown here is a converging lens with an object and it's marked and its image drawn. Use ray tracing to find and mark the locations of the focal points of this lens. Okay, first of all, we need to figure out which of these is the um, object and which one of these is the image. So that's the first part of the problem. I already have here. Um, my guess is for the focal points, but uh, let's ignore those for now. 
Okay, so if we look at this, if this is a converging lens, which is what these arrows identify it as, knowing what we know from converging lenses and what we did in part one, if this was our object, okay, and it's right side up, if our image is on the same side of the converging lens, it must be inverted. The only way it's right side up is as if it's on the other side. So this cannot be the object. If this is our object, it's possible, if it's inside the focal point, which is my guess, it's possible for the image to be projected right side up behind it. In fact, if it is inside the focal point, it'll be magnified and be uh, upright. So, let's draw some rays and see. So this is going to be our object. Okay, let's see if we can see this better. This is going to be our object. And this is going to be our image. So if I draw some rays, the first one is here and then vertically across or horizontally across. The next one is straight through and then down. And then the last one goes right through the center. Okay. Now let's bounce these rays back off. So they're always directly perpendicular to where they hit our lens. So this one comes back this way. Perfect. This one comes back this way. I almost got that drawing right, but it's really close. And this last one will come back up to here. Okay, and then the last thing we do is see where this light comes through. This is going to go right through our focal point. So for this one, we see all the rays um, bounce back and intersect on the object, which is what we expected to happen, because that tells us that's where the object is. Um, following the guidelines that we have three lines, ray traces, one that goes up and, hor and perpendicular to, uh, or I'm sorry, parallel to our plane, perpendicular to our converging lens, one that goes directly horizontal from the image, and one that goes down through the origin. Okay? So, drawing these, the piece that intersects here, that's the piece that intersects this line with the image right? This is our focal point, and we see that on the same side. They'll be on the exact same side on the opposite side, and it's this line right here that projects through the original object, and that's our focal point here. So ray tracing is definitely, uh, it's simple when you know the rules. It just takes some practice, but it's different for converging lenses than it is for just a regular lens. So um, if you're learning this, definitely look into spherical lenses and how to draw rays versus um, flat mirrors. Um, but it's a good example to practice so you can practice your ray tracing. And that way you can go back and take a look at the uh, Stella Thomas part one and draw your rays here and see if you can track where the images should be. Okay, that's it for our problem. If this was helpful, please leave a like, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section, and I will do my best to answer them, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.